In the headlines, airline operators threatened to shut down operation over aviation fuel price hike. Security operatives neutralized several bandits, recover 317 cattle, 73 sheep in Niger state. Colleges of Education Academic Staff Union threatened to shut down colleges across the country over government's refusal to release promised 15 billion naira revitalization fund. And on the foreign scene, Russia Ukraine talks to resume Tuesday as two killed in Kyiv housing block strike. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuela. Thank you for joining. Now the details. Niger state government says the joint security operatives comprising the army, the police and other security agencies killed several bandits in the Mariga local government area of the state in the last three days, during which 317 cattle and 73 sheep were recovered. State Commissioner for Local Government Chieftaincy Affairs and Internal Security, Emmanuel Umar, disclosed this on Monday while briefing newsmen in Mina, the state capital. He said two security agents were injured during the operation and were being treated at a medical facility. Meanwhile, the three Chinese expatriates abducted by terrorists at the Zungeru Hydroelectric Power Dam in Wushishi local government area of Niger State are still in captivity. Two months after, two months after, Umar said that the state government is working in collaboration with the federal government to secure the release of the experts. The Chinese engineers were abducted on January 4th when the terrorist attack officials working on a transmission line tour along Gusese village to, and two persons were killed in the process. In the similar vein, bandits have killed one person, leaving six others injured when they fired gunshots at a truck conveying onion traders and their commodity along Sokoto Goronyo Road on Sunday. The chairman of Goronyo local government area, Abdul Wahab Goronyo, who confirmed the attack, said the bandits ambushed the traders along Kwanan Danjira. He said that the traders were on their way to the southern parts of the country after making bulk purchases at Goronyo Sunday Market in Sokoto State. The council chairman said that the bandits used firewoods to block their road while the truck ran over it and fell, adding that the bandits also abducted some of the traders whose identities are yet to be ascertained. According to him, the bandits had rustled several animals at Eradoli village and expressed worry over the activities of inf information informants in the area, noting that the bandits stormed the areas shortly after the military returned from their routine patrol in the area. Now, police say that they have dispatched officers and men to all parks and garages to prevent breakdown of law and order in Lagos motor parks. The command spokesman, CSP Adekunle Ajisebutu, said that the step is a proactive measure. Lagos State Police Commissioner Abiodun Alabi had directed all area commanders and divisional police officers to beef up security and maintain visibility in their area of coverage. The order follows the infinite, indefinite suspension of the Lagos State Chapter Chairman of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, Musiliu Akinsaya, popularly called MCO Luomo, over alleged misconduct. Addressing newsmen on Monday, the command PPRO, CSP Adekunle Ajisebutu, assured of uh, adequate steps to uh, uh, secure Lagos State. Thank you. I am not expected to reveal our strategies. However, as you can see, we have a large number of police officers posted to strategic locations, including uh, motor parks and garages across the state. Uh, this is a proactive approach to crime prevention and management, which the command is doing. We wouldn't wait and fold our arms and allow miscrimes uh, or hoodlums to hold the command by the jugular. And this is why we want to prevent possible breakdown of law and order, and that is why we have done this massive deployment. It is in the interest of members of the public. 
We can assure you that we will manage the crisis. For now, there is no crisis. We are trying to prevent crisis, and that's why uh, the Commissioner of Police has ordered deployment of police patrol teams across the state. And of course, he has directed all the other commanders, DPOs, strategic patrol officers, field commanders, to ensure 24-hour surveillance and intensive disability patrol of all the uh, um, of all parts of, of the state, with a view to preventing breakdown of law and order. Meanwhile, CSP Adekunle Ajisebutu equally said the command is still making efforts to arrest those involved in the killing of Olua Bamishe Ayonwole in a Lagos state-owned bus rapid transit. As you have rightly said, um, the suspect has been arraigned in court. Therefore, I would want to refrain from making comments on the case because that will amount to subjugate. However, as a command, we will not stop at nothing to arrest other suspects. And that's why when cases are charged to court, the charges usually read A, B, C, and either two or three others currently at large. Uh, the fact that uh, the principal suspect has been arraigned in court will not stop us from going further in our investigation. And as we make progress as regards this very case, we will brief the press. We will inform members of the public. Now, Advocates Sons Frontiers, otherwise known as Lawyers Without Borders, has convened its second dialogue between civil society and the police to continue its advocacy on human rights violations by security agencies in Nigeria. The dialogue, which focuses on issues regarding torture while in police detention, extrajudicial killings and also harassment, seeks to collaborate with the police on how to address the lingering issues and chart a course forward. Strengthening the national actors' capacities and advocation for ending serious human rights violations in Nigeria, otherwise known as the SIF Project, is an initiative of Avocat Sans Frontiers in collaboration with the European Union, among other stakeholders, to champion the implementation of human rights, the anti-torture act, and building advocacy around issues regarding police brutality, extrajudicial killings, among other human rights abuses. According to the head of office of Avocats on Frontiers in Nigeria, Angela Uzoma Iwuchuku, she explains that the Situation Room was created to improve partnership between civil society and the police to address issues regarding implementation and promotion of human rights in Nigeria. We acknowledge the fact that um, a lot had happened, also given the aftermath of the NSAS protest, and we wanted to make sure that it is clear to everyone that the civil society and the police are working together to promote human rights. The SAFE project, as we saw in the video, is really addressing key issues of human rights violations, particularly as it pertains to the use of torture by security personnel in Nigeria, and also issues of extrajudicial killings, and arbitrary detention. Representing the European Union, the head of governance, peace and migration section, Clément Boutillier, says the project remains important as it targets human rights violations as well as addressing the root causes of conflicts. The SAFE project is a very important one from the European Union because it's targeted at addressing human rights violations, torture, extrajudicial killings and arbitrary detentions. It's both an issue of human rights and also it's an issue of addressing the root causes of conflicts uh, in Nigeria. Also, the program director of Camelite Prisoners Interest Organization, Father Ambrose Ikeroko, faulted the NSAS protest as well as other attacks on security personnel as the result of continuous violation of the rights of Nigerians by security agencies. We saw NSAS uh, coming uh, where people are keen to push back and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, complain about uh, the excessive use of uh, force by the security uh, forces in the country. All of these are as a result of, uh, you know, a, 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 the, the lingering um, situation or cases of uh, human rights violation. On his part, the acting force public relations officer, Muiwa Dejobi, 
pledged the commitment of the force to name and shame officers who violate citizens' rights. We have trust deficit. People still don't believe in us. Like I told PROs, thank God Edukon is there. I said the new system is name and shame them. If a policeman who has been sent to go and enforce the law is the one killing, attacking, suppressing, harassing Nigerians, why are you hiding such a person? Let Nigerians know the name of the person and what he has done. You see so many videos trending on social media. We have our city officers that will track them forward to us and forward to the CPs to try. So in as much as we know that our men will always misbehave on the field, we want CSOs, individuals, Nigerians to believe in us that we don't pamper them. The Police and Civil Society Situation Room Dialogue is a product of the SAFE project, which was commissioned in 2018. The Situation Room Dialogue is the second meeting of the stakeholders who first met in the year 2021. Sagir Ibrahim reporting for Trust TV. Now, as after intense disagreement over the hike in price and shortage of jet A1 aviation fuel, airline operators and oil marketers have reached a resolution to peg aviation fuel at 500 naira per liter in the interim. The price is to run for three days, pending the determination of a substantive price. The group managing director of NNPC, Mele Kari, disclosed this at the end of the resumed stakeholders' meeting. He added that the airline operators will be given licenses to import aviation fuel, as requested by the chairman of Airpeace, who also disclosed that with the latest development, Nigerians should expect to pay 85,000 naira for air ticket per seat. Deputy Speaker of the House, Ahmed Idris Wasi, pleaded with the stakeholders to resolve the issue and reduce the sufferings of aviation passengers in the country.
And on educational matters, Colleges of Education Academic Staff Union has threatened to shut down colleges of education across the country over claims that the federal government refused to release the 15 billion naira revitalization fund it promised since 2018. The president of the union, Smart Olugbeko, stated this on Monday in a statement. The union asked Nigerians to hold the federal government responsible if it shut down colleges of education and also called on the government to demonstrate genuine concern for teacher education in the way issues concerning the subsector in education. According to the union, the implication of the non-release of the fund is the deplorable conditions of the teaching learning infrastructure that will have been addressed if the fund is released. This is coming hours after the Academic Staff Union of Universities extended its warning strike for another two months. Now, land dispute between Ahamadu Bello University Zaria and Kaduna State Government may linger as the state government maintains its earlier stand on revoking the institution's College of Agriculture land. Fatima Saleladan has more. The state government says in a press briefing that the institution has violated the trust given to them. The Sunda has noted the press release issued by Amadou Bello University signed by Director, Public Affairs Directorate, dated 10 March 2022. The statement sought to portray the French portion as the total extent of land allocated to GI 1060 in a fulfilled bid to conceal the unlawful excision and subdivisions that had, been that had taken place at the College of Agri Commando, satellite image of the site showed that the land allocated extends beyond the fence, and a physical inspection will for further confirm this portion. ABU statement tries to shift the G item to 1060, from which 1965, from its 1965 size, in event to attempt to pretend, pretend that uh, the portion illegally excised and subdivided were never part of the original allocation. This is the first time that Kasubda had seen an instance where a landowner admits ownership of less than its full allocation. And on the issue of land for animal grazing for the institution, the state government says it has set aside a new land for that purpose. The area that is going to be reserved for the uh, existing school of agri, which is about uh, close to 120 hectares, is for the academic aspect of it and the residential development of the institute. Of the institute, I've told you that uh, the agricultural aspect of it, which is the livestock experimental uh, station, is going to be moved away from the city centre. You could notice that over almost 60 years back, these places were forests, and now you can see how it's been sandwiched with residential development, and that is what even prompted the Institute of Agri to carry out this illegal subvention of plots. It will be recalled that the Kaduna State Government has demolished the fence of the institution and has marked the land in contention for residential, commercial, recreational and public use, which will be divided into about 529 plots covering an area of 133.89 hectares. Fatima Saladin, Trust TV News, Kaduna. Members of the National Association of Master Bakers, Caterers of Nigeria, Imo State Chapter on Monday, say that they have concluded to shut down production in the state. The state chairman of the association, Osmond Ikeoma, stated this to newsmen in Oweri. He said the reason for the strike action include cost of materials such as diesel, vegetable oil and sugar, which according to him is now beyond the reach of the bakers and production have continued to skyrocket. He pleaded with the state governments at all levels to look into the challenges facing bakers in the country. You're watching Trust News Update. Coming up shortly... History behind Kaltungo Brave Men. Details and more shortly.
Thanks for staying. You're watching Trust News Update. Here's another look at the top stories again. Joint security operatives killed several bandits, recovered cattle and sheep in the Mariga local government area of Niger State in the last three days. Plus, airline operators and oil marketers have reached a resolution to peg aviation fuel at 500 naira per litre in the interim, following earlier threats to shut down operations over lack of aviation fuel. Moving on, Nigeria has recorded 12 new cases of COVID-19 across four states of the country. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control in its update for Monday, March 14th, said that the data showed one person discharged after recovering from COVID infection. According to NCDC record, no, there's no record, no person died of COVID complications, keeping the fatality figure at 3,142. So far, a total of 255,001 infections have been confirmed in the country with 249,373 recoveries. Professor of Public Health Aking Osogu and Chairman Experts Review Committee of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency say available resources have been committed to stem the tide of possible reinvention of wide polio virus and improve combat of the circulating variant of the virus. He said this at a reconvened expert review committee meeting by the agency to prevent and control possible infiltration of the wide polio virus. Essentially, the expert review committee meeting has been reconvened proactively uh, to ensure that we are able to be in a position to stem the possible importation of the wild polio virus and also to improve immunization to combat the circulating variant of the polio virus in the country. Well, the main challenge, of course, as I mentioned earlier on, is because now the world is a small village in terms of uh, any outbreak anywhere, any country at risk means all of us are at risk. So that's a challenge in itself. Of course, the other challenges will be the challenges of financing the response. You know, financing uh, the, the response, including the surveillance that is required. Uh, it will also include, of course, the uh, laboratory services that are needed to back up, including sequencing, you know, periodic. So it requires some investments. So that, that in itself might be some challenge. But what is most important is the commitment of the government. And that commitment is what has manifested in the rapid reactivation of this committee, even before uh, any case has been reported in Nigeria. So that, to me, is, you know, looks like we, are, we will be on top of it. Kaltungo Traditional Council in Gombe State, once historical heritage site, where brave men of the kingdom hunt for decades, preserved to attract tourists to the state. Paramount traditional ruler Michael Tungo Saleh Muhammad transcends to Pantum Mountain, located in the outskirts of Kaltungo town, on a special visit to the monument. Ibrahim Ismail follows the entourage and files in this report. Pantun Mountain is naturally blessed with clean water, vegetation and a stream where people swim for luxury. For years, the people of Kaltungo Kingdom have been in charge here. This is where our forefathers used to come for hunting. Sometimes they even spend two weeks, three weeks, some even one month. There, there is a cave, so big, big caves that you can enter. If, if nobody see you, somebody will be fasting. You will see the person, but he won't see you because you are in the cave. So that cave is like, like a protective place. Uh, like there are some birds. We have some guinea fowl, pigeons, that's uh, wild pigeons, not uh, domestic pigeons. So that's why they used to stay and lay their eggs and some other reptiles. Crocodiles used to be here before and baboons, gorillas, 
uh, even lion and tigers they used to be here but due to hunting you know the hunters are now more in numbers than the animals so they are no more here they are they are, they are scared away the michael tungo is on a special visit to the site in an effort to ensure adequate security in the area as he moves to a Well, with that, we've come to the end of the news update on Trust Television. But you can connect with us via our social media platforms and also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch us live. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching.